Elk have been in Kentucky now for 23 years, so we were transitioned from the restoration phase to the management phase. Kentucky Fish and Wildlife and the University of Kentucky are involved in a collaborative effort. What we're working on today is a calf survival project to kind of help us update some survival estimates that we need to perform every few years to make sure we're on the right track with the elk herd. As a University of Kentucky graduate student, it's been an amazing opportunity to be down here in southeastern Kentucky studying the state's elk herd. We started this project back in January. We identified 25 pregnant females out on various landscapes in the eastern area of the elk zone. Each of those females was given a vaginal implant transmitter that tells us when a calf is born. So today our crew is going in to locate these calves. So what we're trying to do is home towards the cow signal, so her collar emits a VHF signal, and um, we can hear it through these receivers. You can hear kind of the beeps. Where they sound louder, that's closer to where she is. So we're trying to get a good idea of how close she is to where the birth site is, because we have a transmitter there too. So it sounds like they're a little bit in two different directions, but this thing was born yesterday, so that's what I'd expect. We're just gonna kind of track to her first, see if we can get eyes on her, and maybe she has the calf behind her. Sounds like she's that way. This study is a nice follow-up to previous calf studies. The last one was done about a decade ago. We have new technology now with these transmitters that allows us to get to the calf as soon as it's born. A lot of things have changed over the last decade. We have changes to the habitat. Mining has decreased. We have a lot of woody growth coming back in. We have changes in the way people use the landscape, and we have changes in predator compositions. So it's really important to try to update these estimates uh, as we go through time, so we're keeping up with the changes that we're seeing here. So the cow took off because we were following her signal and it got louder and then all of a sudden it got really, really quiet, so she probably took off over this hill. So we'll track to the birth site and look around there and then search for the calf. I think she's getting close to it now. This is the typical birth site. Here's the transmitter that we put into the pregnant cow. So from the birth site here, it's on a nice bench and it's pretty steep on either side. So more than likely, she's moved the calf along here somewhere. So we're gonna kind of spread out in two directions and follow the trails and see if it's off of that. Hi, right there. Nice job there. See her right here. See how well it's hidden. We're only 15 yards from the birth site. We'll put a blindfold on so that it calms down. They can't see what's going on, so they're less likely to try to run away from us or struggle during the capture process. We'll pick it up and move it a little bit away from where it was actually hiding to do our worker procedure. We don't really want to influence or disturb exactly where it was hiding. So that hiding behavior is so ingrained in them that even with all these people here, and when I picked it up, it doesn't move, it doesn't make a sound. It's just trying to stay still and stay alive. So we're gonna see if it's a male or a female. It's a female. So we're hoping to draw blood, kind of like when you take your dog to the vet, they draw blood and get just a standard white blood cell, red blood cell, nutritional aspect to it. We're gonna collect the hair and hopefully do some analysis on that. So we're gonna try to pull about 15 milliliters, a little more if we can get it. We'll put them in blood tubes. This one has an anticoagulant in it. So the next thing goes on is the collar. It's the most important thing. This is like its own radio station, so it has a different frequency that's specific just to this animal for as long as it's wearing the collar. So it's an expandable VHF collar that as their neck grows, it will grow. The loops will pop and the fabric will stretch. It's like an elastic band. And then eventually the fabric will wear through and fall off. So ideally it will stay on for about a year. We will take a series of body measurements and that will complement the weight. So we'll weigh them at the end of the capture. So this one is total body length. So from the tip of the nose, it'll fall all the way flat to the body along the curve of the spine. 
will go to the base of the tail, so where the tail meets the body. So be 105 centimeters even. So we'll do chest girth next. We'll slide the tape up right under the armpits as close as we can, and we'll cinch it tight, but not too tight. And so that'll be 60.2. Body measurements kind of help to give us better indication of uh, are they leggier, what's their body proportion. Measuring hoof growth, so it's kind of the new hoof deposit since they've started to develop. So this one is going to be the incisor measurement, so these ones have barely erupted, so it's going to be a really small measurement. Some of them are out a lot. We'll take a picture of the umbilical scar. That will tell us how old really this calf is and can kind of confirm the notifications that we got today. We'll also take pictures of their hoof wear. So if it's soft and spongy, it means they really haven't moved far, they're pretty young. And if it's harder, then they may have traveled a distance. We're putting her in a scent-free mesh bag to get a measurement of her weight. 17.04. Once we've taken the weight, we'll put in ear tags, and that's kind of their identification tag. The whole capture process only takes about 15 or 20 minutes to collect all the data, and as soon as we're done, we'll take the calf right back to where its original hiding location was, pull the blindfold off, and leave the area. The cow is usually around the area. We may see her several times during the actual workup. She's checking on us to make sure that her calf's okay. So she'll come back in and she may nurse immediately afterwards. So we want to get out of there as quickly as possible. It's been a really productive spring so far and we hope it continues. And I can't wait to see what we learned from this study. Most folks don't understand the amount of time and work that goes into managing a particular species like this, but we feel very fortunate to get to conduct these research projects and get out and do some enjoyable field work and take satisfaction knowing that we're managing the resource the best way that we can.